Hey there everyone, I recently did a couple of videos on HP Boost. The first one being a guide to what you should be thinking about when HP Boosting, and the second one tier ranking all the mythics in the game. So today we're rounding this off by having a look at the legendaries. Now I'm not going to look at every single legendary in the game because there's way too many, so I've selected about 35 monsters that we're going to talk about in this video, and actually a couple of them are super epics. So generally speaking, you do not want to be HP Boosting legendaries, you want to be doing mythics, and if you really want to know the full depth of you know why I made certain decisions, uh, about about these, um, you know, what to HP boost, go check out the video that is the guide video that goes in depth and explains the, the thought process behind this stuff. Um, there'll be a link to it in the description as well as in a pinned comment. Um, I'm not going to be going into detail on that stuff in this, in this video, just about, you know, the individual monsters and what makes them good or bad for HP boosting. Um, so I've also got to rush through because, you know, getting through 35, this is a long video. I know it's, I know it's a long video. In fact, if you just want to know where I've tier ranked the monsters, uh, there is a screen right at the end of this video where I've just got things detailed, uh, written down so you can go see them there. In fact, I'm going to be putting this into the tier list on the forum. So there'll be a link to that as well in the description. Um, and there's a, going to be a guide as well on the on the forum, which has uh, some of the guide aspects as well as um, yeah some some other stuff. So it's all going to be catalogued on there as well as in these videos. And uh, suddenly over time, you know, if you look watching this a year or two later, things have probably changed a bit. Um, so if you go see on the forum, you'll see the most up to date version of things. Uh, but if you like to hear me talking, then here you are, here I am. Um, so the criteria for selecting HP boost. Um, I will say that from the guide bit, which basically is that they need to be monsters that can do 6,000 or more damage to high defense uh, enemies. They need to just be generally good, and they need to um, ideally have high defense, and perhaps having a good first turn, so kind of a reason to survive to that first turn. Um, those are the kind of criteria, generally speaking, and like I said, you do want to go for mythics rather than legendaries because mythics are stronger, and this is a really long-term, uh, really long-term investment. You can't HP boost that many things, so it's kind of best to go for the the strong mythics which you get rather than wasting it on some legendaries. But there are some legendaries worth considering. So you can see the tiers that I've put uh, the monsters into here. Now, just to say from the beginning, the D tier. The vast majority of mods, uh, legendaries I've put in the D tier. Uh, it's just like over 100 in there. Um, the 35 that we're talking about today are the other tiers. I'm not going to mention any D tier monsters in this video because it's just, you know, it's, it's all of them. Um, and I'm not going to be going through that. So the S tier, this is actually the ones which I would maybe say are worth doing. Um, it is a small category of about 10 to 15 monsters right now. And uh, those are the ones which you would maybe think about doing. Actually, I think it's not even 10. Um, legendaries that are maybe worth considering compared to Mythic. So they're the particular ones that happen to be good for HP boosting. The A tier are ones that are pretty good, but not as good as most of the Mythics. Um, so you, the next screen we'll see in a second, like where I'm kind of ranking this compared to Mythics. But the A tier are basically like you could do these if you don't have other Mythics to, uh, to HP boost. But I would not be highly recommending them. Um, and then the B tier is monsters which happen to kind of meet the criteria that actually would, you know, in a sort of bubble be good to HP boost, except that they're not necessarily monsters which will do well in PvP and stuff, and so probably aren't so worth HP boosting. And then the F tier we have as the traps. So these are a few monsters which some people may consider HP boosting, or they're very strong monsters, but for specific reasons I would actually not HP boost them. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about first, so we can kind of identify some of the things to uh, to not fall for and not be um, thinking about when you're trying to decide uh, what to HP boost. So seeing that compared to the Mythic tiers, um, I have now uh, renamed them as S tier, A tier, B tier and D tier. Um, in the, the Mythic video I just had them as tier 1, 2, 3 and 4. Um, but yeah, basically the S tier legendaries are kind of uh, comparable to the A tier Mythics. Um, probably mostly at the bottom of that, um, but there are going to be um, some which are, you know, a little bit higher, maybe towards the upper end of the A tier of Mythics. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where they sit. So definitely not in the same as S tier Mythics, um, but in the kind of tier of like, okay, these are, you know, the kind of good Mythics to HP boost. Some of those legendaries could be could be in that on that kind of level. And then the A tier legendaries, which are ones which, you know, they, they get good benefit from HP boost. If they're a Mythics, they'd be up in A tier for Mythics, but they're legendaries, so they're not quite as good. Those go down in the B tier. Um, so 
they're ones which like are kind of bog standard yeah you could do these but um but you're not really they're not like a a special one that you're happy about HP boosting they're just kind of like you've got excess ores somehow and uh you've got want to boost some of your monsters that you're using that are strong so yeah they're down there and then uh obviously anything below the a tier on legendaries it's off the scale uh really compared to mythics um so yeah that's where we sit and the only other couple of things that i want to mention before going into the bulk of this video is that um it is up to you what you want to HP boost. This is just a guide. This is just me throwing out my thoughts of like, okay, if I were to um, look at this and try and figure out what is best for HP boost, this is what I'm saying. So if you have your favorite legendary that you want HP boost or your favorite super epic, I don't know, uh, go ahead and do it. But um, if I put it in as a trap or something else in this video, then maybe reconsider and uh, think about HP boosting some stuff that will really benefit you lots in the long run. Um, and otherwise, the way I'm ordering things is um, within the tiers, they are in their tier disposition. That's only for this video. On the guide, they're going to be just alphabetical order. But in this video, I have kind of put them in their tier list order. So at the beginning of the S tier are kind of like the strongest legendaries. And then at the back of the S tier are kind of like the weaker legendaries. And we see that as we go down. Um, just the way I put it together, I thought it might be useful for this video, but on the guide, uh, I'm not going to be doing that because otherwise it's going to be too hard to uh, to kind of find where certain monsters are. Alphabetical makes it a lot easier. Um, so yes, that's it. Uh, let's start off with the traps. So the first trap is Angel Lion. Now Angel Lion, um, this is a very strong legendary. It's among the strongest legendaries. When I did my best legendaries in the game uh, two or three years ago now, uh, I did a video on that. Angel Lion was my top pick, which I think was probably slightly controversial at the time, and maybe in hindsight, you could argue other ones uh, would be stronger, but there's some aspects of it which I really like, like it's a stun counter, and for people who don't have good stun protection, which bear in mind a few years ago, uh, that was a lot harder to get. Uh, these days we have a lot more better options for stun protection, but Angel Lion was kind of the standout for quite a few years, and that made me kind of want to put it in first place. Anyway, that aside, this is a very strong monster. But the issue with it is it does not deal enough damage. Um, it's pretty squishy as well. Originally it had um, higher defense, and ironically if you HP boost it, it actually becomes equivalent tankiness to what it was originally on release. Um, but the retribution damage isn't quite high enough. Um, it's it's good, it's, it's definitely good, but it doesn't kill the high defense monsters. And against HP boosted things, it doesn't do anywhere near enough damage. Raw Blood Fury is also kind of just about enough to kill things, um, which uh, is, is slightly unusual actually we're going to see this more as uh, more hp boost mythics get played with high defense is that blood moves which have always kind of just one shot some of them will not be one shotting um so yeah angel line it, it's it doesn't quite do enough and it really needs to be able to one shot with their retribution to charge raw blood fury because otherwise it kind of gets a bit stuck uh where it can't do much now i will say some people are going to say Yes, you can sold exchange. Uh, you know, you can use it in combos with uh, Siberian or something like that to give it that kill. So then you can use Raw Blood Fury. And yes, it will work in those scenarios. But I think there is some limitations to that. You know, if you're only using in sold exchange combos to set it up, um, it's not necessarily going to be uh, the best thing to HP boost because you won't always want to play those combos. Um, if you just want to play the stun protection, it won't play super well. So I'm a little kind of on the fence um, and a bit pessimistic because of that about whether it will be good in the long run um, so I don't think it's a good option for HP boosting even though it's a really strong monster and that's what we're going to see with these other traps so Blue Maluga uh, this looks like it would be a really good monster for HP boosting it's got high defense it shields itself as well um, it's got piercing damage with tsunami water and that always one shots things doesn't it no it doesn't uh, <laughs> it doesn't really one shot mythics like the higher HP mythics and with any HP boosted mythics it will not one shot them um, so this just has the problem of this was made years before um, Mythics and HP boost were a thing, so its piercing damage doesn't do enough. Um, so for that reason, it just is not going to play particularly well, even though it's good stun protection and it's tanky, and it's got some nice you know piercing damage and stuff. This is one of the best monsters in the game a few years ago. Now I do not think it's a good option for HP boosting. Now we have Padronorca. Now this is obviously a really, really strong monster. It's one of the best PvP monsters. Probably this is the number one best legendary in the game for PvP. Uh, but it's not good for HP boost. And this is going to fall out of favour over the next few years as more people start um, playing Mythics and HP boosted Mythics and tanky stuff because it doesn't do enough damage. Um, it's got really high attack, but those killer moves, they've always been weak and they are only good enough here because he's got high attack. 
but as things become tankier, they're not going to do well. And it itself is squishy. Um, giving it a bit more HP is going to be you know nice in that regard. It's got camouflage, so it's kind of will be a bit awkward to kill. Um, the blood crave is good damage, but I think the fact that it won't be able to one-shot things is going to be a really big problem um, in the long run. So I don't think it's a good option for HP boosting, and it's going to be super squishy compared to like um, tanky HP boosted mythics. This will be like triple as easy to kill. Um, so yeah, not a good option in the long run. So the king, um, this one similar kind of story here. It's a very strong legendary, but um, the damage on it is just quite poor. Um, Charge Slayer Bane doesn't do enough damage uh, to kill things, and Divine Rage, it will need um, it will need a few, uh, I think like three charges to be able to one-shot things, so it's going to be a bit too slow, uh, even though it's very strong. Um, maybe if they ever give um, these two Tranquilizing Entrance monsters a second passive, it might be good again. Um, but as it stands, I don't think the damage is good enough, even though it's got piercing stuff. Um, Infernicorn, this is another one that is very popular and very good. I think it's going to fall out of favour, because the double piercing blow only just about does enough to one-shot legendaries, so it doesn't do well against mythics, and against any HP boosted legendaries or mythics, it will really not do well. Um, so still going to be a solid option in Link Fire, and you know that double piercing blow, when you can get a kill, when it gets stunned, great, because then you're going to go into the Link Blood Bite and stuff, but this may actually end up being a Link Fire monster that people use in the long run, rather than just a general purpose um, stun converter, piercing sweeper, as it has been for the last few years. So I would say this is a trap, I don't think you should HP boost it, especially because it's got low defense, it's got chrono weakness, and it's going to be losing a bunch of HP to double piercing blow. It's going to be so easy to kill off. Uh, compared to other things that are out there. Uh, it has got a shield, but, you know, uh, the other stuff is, um, is the more important stuff. There. So that was the traps. Now let's get to the best options. So these are ones which, like I said, worth considering compared to mythics. Um, you may actually do some of these um, if you don't have some of the top mythics to HP boost. So the first one is Elm Fox. Now this one um, is one of the newish ones, and it is extremely powerful since they added the passive to double its stats. And that's the big reason here. So um, basically the damage it gets from Flaming Blaze is more than enough. Uh, the damage on Stone Missile and Thundering Strike, um, those also easily do tons of damage. So you can do great damage output with this. It's also very tanky because of that double defense. So it's kind of higher than a full defense monster. So having HP boost on that is just going to be just going to be really strong. This is clearly like, you know, it, it hangs with the mythics and just does really well. It's got controlling stuff. It's a very strong monster. Um, yeah, clear choice here to HP boost. Similarly, Shika Bloom. This is not only full defense, but actually gets a 50% defense boost. So stupidly tanky. Um, it also does very high damage with the Union Sneak Attack. Uh, because even though it's got the low attack, it has the 50% attack buff. And um, this is just a very strong monster. Um, requires Beast Union, so somewhat specific, and for that reason, maybe you would want to consider doing other things first, because here you're investing into Beast Union, and, you know, if you find that actually you don't like that, or other things are stronger, in the long run, you won't be using this so much. Um, but even so, it it's clearly meets the criteria for uh, what makes HP boost a monster's good. Next we have Sturgeonidas. Now this one is very cool. Um, it, it does a lot more damage than you would think. Because, sure, it gets double attack when it's at high HP, but also the attacks on it all do 50% more damage than you would than they should do uh, on other monsters. Um, so, Nullifying Strike does not do enough damage against HP boosted mythics, but Union Attack does. So this is perhaps a little bit more niche than um, it would otherwise be, you know, for the setting of everyone using tanky stuff. You will probably be having to use it in Union, rather than just general purpose, which is how it can be used right now. Um, but even so, I think that's fairly easy to set up, um, and otherwise Nullifying Strike is going to do good damage anyway, and not everything is going to be a tanky HP booster mythic, so, you know, you can use the Nullifying Strike on other things. Um, so yeah, this is going to do proper damage, and then it's got high defense, uh, it is amazing stun protection, it's a really good monster, I think it's a clear choice for HP boost, um, definitely one that's going to be very useful for people. Next we have Beetle Brutes. Now this is not a super popular monster right now, but they've buffed it a little bit since its release, and I think it's going to be very strong in the long run. Um, once people have the tools for 
uh, Bug Union, which I'm very close to doing that. I'm really excited. Uh, I'd recently got a Beetle Brute and I want to be using it lots. Um, but without rambling, um, the key thing here is that it has hardened carapace, so it is very tanky. It also has whole ground with the swift can of lies, so it can not only tank a bunch, but then also heal itself up and then tank more. Um, the swift can of lies is going to heal your team, which fits in very nicely when you're, you know, using a bunch of tanky stuff. Uh, be able to heal them up is, is going to make, just make it a nightmare for your, uh, for your opponent. Swift Cannibalize also works really nicely in the in the sort of meta that we're we're trending towards, where there's a lot more sort of token disruption, and you need to smooth out your team by removing things which uh, which aren't working that well um, in the current bit of the battle. Survivor Bane, super powerful. Union attack we just talked about about it on Sturgeonidas, and here we've got a higher attack monster. It, it does enough damage. It's plenty. Blood Crave as well, good damage. So just should work really nicely um, against tanky things and gain a lot of benefit from HP boost. Geocosma, um, this, the damage on it is not absolutely insane, but Payback here, they're one shot. Stealth Bane is very high damage. I'm, I'm not sure about the exact damage from this, but it, it's probably enough. Um, but what makes this good, um, something that we talked about in the Mythic video, is that um, protectors that are tanky and stuff, they gain more benefit from being uh, HP boosted because they get in the way of attacks, and if they're HP boosted, they're going to get in the way of more attacks. So um, this is going to be a huge pain for your opponent when you've HP boosted it, because it is a big wall to get through, um, and if it gets any turns, then it's probably going to get kills as well, um, so it's just going to benefit a lot from sticking around better. Um, so the next one is Rockolossus. Rockolossus, um, I love this monster, and it's very strong to, uh, yeah, just, just generally very strong. So we've got some stuff here with Beetle Brute, uh, similarities with Beetle Brute, with the hardened carapace and the whole ground and a way to heal. Um, so just fits in really nicely with that. Plus also the fact that it has tracking piercing mortar, which does enough damage to one-shot HP boosted mythics, and that's piercing damage. So this just fits really, really nicely, uh, where it's very tanky and difficult to deal with, and making it even tankier is going to be much better um, and can do all the damage that you need it to do. Um, it's reasonably slow to get off at the beginning, which is why it's not easy to fit into most teams, but I found that it's actually just quite good to just generally slot into most teams. Um, and yeah, with the HP boost, it may even prove to be even better with that. Pandemonium, um, this doesn't care about damage. It's just a support monster. It's a very tanky support monster as well. Um, so being even tankier is going to be better. Uh, that also makes it better for the Sacrifice Team turn because uh, sometimes it can be a little bit awkward with this monster because Sacrifice Team turn needs 100 seconds to pass and if you've boosted this at all, which you know you, you will have if you're going to HP boost it as well, um, then those moves are all less than 100 seconds. So you kind of have to use two moves before you can, HP, uh, you can Sacrifice Team turn, which makes it a little bit awkward to line up. And so having more HP is going to make that easier. And this is generally just one of these monsters that um, if it sits around and you get to have turns with it, then you can really take over the battle. Um, it's it's kind of similar to um, uh, to Elm Fox, actually, with the healing stun, uh, but it's also got the exhausting sleep that's, you know, very strong. So, um, yeah, really good option for HP boost. One that maybe people wouldn't really consider because uh, it's, not, it's not a super popular monster right now, but it's definitely a very strong one. Um, next we have Skullopen Dragon. So like I said, uh, we started off with like the really high tier monsters and we're slowly going down. Skullopen Dragon, I think, um, I, I, I mentioned it, I think, in the original guide video. And it's one that I'm getting higher on, especially as I think about how you can set up the first kill by putting a token into the enemy team or leaving something on low HP. And I think this is probably going to turn out to be really, really strong once people catch on and figure out how to play it. Um, and it's really, really good for HP boost because it repeatedly heals itself and it has hardened carapace. Um, it is a nightmare to kill if it ever gets into its death by chain. And so having the HP boost on that is going to make it even more of a nightmare because, you know, fewer attacks can, can kill it. Um, and it's just going to take more effort to kill. So Skull Open Dragon, great choice for HP boost. That runs off the S tier, so let's move into the A tier. Now these ones are ones that I probably, the ones you'll probably never get to. You'll probably never manage to HP boost these, um, but they are quite good for HP boost. So, you know, kind of prioritize those mythics and the stronger monsters and stuff, but then ultimately these ones are, are uh, gain good benefit from HP boost. Um, they're just not quite up there in the S tier. This first one, Desikian, though, is a very good monster. Uh, a very good monster. Um, really helps out what you want to be doing in the team as well. Um, so it, in terms of HP boost, 
you know, it doesn't do high damage and stuff. It's basically it's just a support monster, and it hasn't got, like, whole ground or a shield, um, other than, okay, fine, it gets a shield on its turn with the secret skill. But it, it doesn't, like, it may just be one shot still uh, with the HP boost, and probably it'll just steadily lose HP and stuff. But that said, it's strong, it's tanky, you want it to stick around, so having higher HP on it is going to be is going to be good. Um, I just think, compared to ST, and that's why I didn't put it in ST, even though it's a very good monster, it doesn't gain an enormous benefit from HP boost. Uh, next we have Lunactia. Now this one, um, I can't quite remember exactly the damage on Assassinate and Slayer Bane uh, when it has piercing, but basically if you use it in Union, the damage is, is pretty good, and it's tanky, it's mostly about the kind of disruption stuff with enemy substitute, um, so it kind of fits well into the criteria, um, and so making it tankier is going to be good. It's also quite a lot about getting that first turn, so it can enemy substitute, um, and with the reasonable speed as well, it's, it's realistic to get to that first turn, and a bit more HP is going to help it get to that first turn. Next we have Vigzerid. Now this one is one I mentioned about, uh, I mentioned in the original guide as well. Um, it's an interesting one because it's it's very strong but it loses its HP as it does moves. So it kind of makes itself squishier and somewhat undoes the HP boost you do. That said, it's very very strong this monster. And if you can get it to its first turn in a Link Storm team, it will really turn around the battle by putting an enemy to sleep and then doing something good. You know, either killing something else with Transient Bash or giving turn to a teammate that can do something even better um so definitely good uh just not up there in the s tier a bit sort of poseidon now this um is comes with a little caveat so this one clearly gains a lot of benefit from hp boost um with its double no sorry triple defense um it becomes very tanky it's got the camouflage there as well it can deal uh high piercing damage with solo vengeance um, the issue with it is it does rely on the uh, Abyss Soldiers, and they are super epics, and they may turn out to be nowhere near as uh, nowhere near good enough um, when facing strong HP boost monsters. Um, there are quite a few of them which which do do a lot worse in that setting. Uh, there are some though, like the Storm one, for example, which has piercing um, when it's with other Abyss Soldiers, and that does enough damage with its retribution and stuff. So, you know, they're, they're probably setups that still exist that are good for this. And in fact, we're going to talk about Abyss Soldier Mist, which I do think is a one of the few super epics that are worth is worth considering HP boosting. So that combo will probably still be alive, and you'll probably want to HP boost both of them, <laughs> which, yeah, is a big investment. Um, so big caveat on this one, but it clearly gains a uh, big benefit from HP boost, so maybe worth considering. Gun for a Jasmine. Now this one, it, it's tanky. It's good stun protection. Um, it can do good piercing damage with a Vigor Fastbreaker. Um, Double Survivor doesn't do good damage, but you know this is a, this is a cool support monster that's strong and got piercing damage on it. Um, it definitely fits the criteria, and it's good. It's just not as strong as, uh, as the S tier. Simply Garden Fairy Sunflower. Um, this has the defensive mode, which you know may come up and uh, be help it be tankier. Um, otherwise, it's very awkward to deal with. Dual Confidence Strike does great damage. Uh, to be honest, you know it's not not exceptional, but it is good. What really sold me on this one was the Vigor Slayer Break. Um, which is a very strong piercing move, and so having that option, um, you know, it, it kind of generally fits well um, into what's going on, as well as got the Vigor Wall Breaker to uh, one-shot a Protector, so pretty good, uh, just not exceptional. Um, and we've got Life Death, uh, I'm just going to call it Life Death, because that's kind of what its name is. Um, this fits very well into things, it's not the tankiest monster, but it's reasonably tanky, um, it can create some very strong setups with uh, Yin Yang Accelerate, um, so I think this has got long potential, uh, sorry, big potential in the long term for uh, supporting various setups, as well as the disruption it does with the Yin Yang Substitute is, is great. Um, what really sells this one though is the piercing by having a Shadow Teammate, which means that Defang and Yin Yang Strike do exceptional damage. So what we have here is something that kind of fits reasonably well into the you know future perceived meta as well as doing high enough damage to deal with stuff, and reasonably-ish tanky. Um, so yeah, good good choice, um, should do it, uh, good, should get a big benefit. And this one maybe has somewhat slightly controversial choice, it doesn't really fit criteria that you'd think. Um, Mantaferno is low defense, so it's pretty damn squishy. Um, what makes me want to HP boost this is I think this is a really awesome monster that is very good uh, for kind of the long term. 
Um, that accelerate on entrance is exceptionally good, and it's got um, just really easy piercing kills. So this does, you know, it, it one-shots things really easily. Man to all these waifu that we're getting, like, it, it just wrecks them uh, because of the acceleration. If you have this plus nine, which you will if you're going to HP boost it, um, man is like 68 seconds or something, um, which to one-shot waifu is just, just crazy, uh, you know, piercing one-shot. And then it's got the uh, the raw mark followed by raw corner snipe to, to kill anything you want. Hits around protectors. Blood Fury does crazy damage after one kill. So it's just got really good damage output, supports your team with accelerate, and um, yes, okay, it's pretty squishy. <laughs> you can kind of help it. Uh, being slightly less squishy with the HP boost, um, so you know not exceptional. This is not S tier, but I do think it's a it's the kind of monster which fits really nicely into what we're doing. So um, having some extra HP on it's gonna gonna be good too. Next is Moku. Now this um, I'm not sure exactly where this is gonna fit in the long run, um, but the main benefit of it, uh, the main use of it, sorry, is it is very tanky at the back and then does the secret skill and piercing one shots things. You know, it, it deals enough damage with its moves, both that and the uh, Moji Moji Ha. So it can do it can do damage fine. It is tanky. Having more HP is going to really benefit what it's doing. Um, I don't know exactly where it's going to sit in the long run in terms of power level. That's the only thing, um, which is why it's here in the A tier. Ashterios. Now this um, is maybe not one that people would normally think of, but Swift Fast Strike does crazy damage. And then you've got Link Blood Bite afterwards, which does, you know, good damage too. Um, this is a Link Fire Monster, but it is a very good one for um, for just being a big threat uh, with low TU moves and supports. Uh, so yeah, supports us in. It protects you from um, sleep stuff um, and also a bit from from poison. Um, so just a very good monster for Link Fire. Um, that being tanky is going to be great. Um, something that I've said about other monsters, which which like heal uh, repeatedly quickly, is that HP boost somewhat doesn't help them as much because what keeps them alive is that repeated healing, not having high HP in the first place. This is something I said for Harleking especially. Um, Harleking you would think meets criteria of you know it gains a big benefit from, from HP boost, but what really makes it survive is that repeated healing to high HP and. That doesn't, you know, having HP boost there or not doesn't really make any difference. Um, so I hope that sort of makes sense. Um, so yeah, Ashtarius, though, I, I think is a good choice. Um, I think it fits well into uh, what people want to do. And similarly, Bafagorge, this is basically the Earth equivalent of um, Ashtarios. And, you know, it can get a kill perfectly fine with Demoralize or Instant Payback Killer. And then once it has a kill, it can do the Link Blood Biting stuff. So being tankier is going to be going to be great for that. Gunfly Clover. Now, at my time making this video, this is a very new monster, but this is really, really good for HP boost. So, in terms of damage output, Dream Crush, great job. You know, that just kills things perfectly fine. Double Counter Strike, not the most exceptional damage, um, but good enough. You know, it's a, it's a good damage move. What you're really using her for, though, is the Hardened Carapace Auto Protect Plus, <laughs> which means she's just a huge wall for them to get through. And so, having uh, more HP. You've got a bigger window of HP where the defense is buffed, and then even then, you know, when it's below, like, her defense is good. So um, having more HP here is, is just going to be really, really good. Um, using her with Gunfrey Jasmine, which is also a good choice for HP boost, um, is very strong. I recently saw a video uh, showing it, and I was so glad, because it's the first thing I thought of when I saw this monster was like, oh, you can use this with Jasmine. You can skip turns to repeatedly heal her, and she is a ridiculous tank uh, because she just has stupidly high defense. Um, so yeah, having more HP on that as well is uh, even better. So great choice here, um, definitely a good monster for HP boost. Also it gains a big benefit from its first turn because it can sleep on that first turn, so if it can survive to that, that's great. Uh, then lastly in the A tier we have Sanctistag. So this is an old classic that's uh, very good. Basically this gets the benefit of um, it as a protector, so having more HP that they have to get through to try and kill it off is going to be a pain. Um, this as well because it's got camouflage means that a bunch of moves sometimes you have to like just throw non-critical moves at this to kind of chip down its health um, which means that you know having more HP you have to chip through is, is going to be a big pain um, so it's not the most exceptional monster these days because we've got harsh counters to protect us um, but definitely one that gains big benefit and it doesn't care about damage stuff it, it's sleep all basically that's what it does um, sleep all not back next um, so it doesn't matter that you know it won't be able to kill things because it, it never did. 
Moving into the B tier, so these are monsters which I would not really recommend HP boosting, they're just noteworthy because um, they gain a, a big benefit from it. So first we have Aura Dragon, now this is, it's a big classic, like it is one of the best monsters PvE. People even use it in PvP because it's pretty damn good there as well, uh, not exceptional though, and that is why it's here in the B tier. In terms of getting extra HP, you know, it, it's reasonably-ish tanky, uh, in the old days this was tanky, but uh, these days we have tankier stuff. And it can life flip friend as well to basically does it on itself to heal itself. Um, so surviving better is going to mean that it can stick around and reincarnate more things. If you're into PVE, this is definitely a good option. And uh, you should probably just consider it over a bunch of the other things in this. Um, but if you are mostly focused on doing HP boost for PVP, as I guess probably people will do, because uh, you don't really need it for PVE, um, this is probably a monster to, to avoid. Um, but it is definitely one that, uh, you know, being able to survive is going to be good for it. Now we have Dotherial. Uh Now this may turn out to be a really good monster. Um, I've always been high on it, but it's never really caught on. And I haven't used it enough to really kind of like, you know, preach that it's uh, amazingly strong. Um, but it does meet a lot of the criteria here. So it's, you know, it's very high defense. Um, it's got that shield as well. Um, when it gets to its turn, it can do some some pretty good stuff. Um, you know, Last Mercy can hit something off, which... Bear in mind, Last Mercy, um, basically you need to do it on a monster which cannot kill Dolthariel, uh, which the idea here is it's got the shield entrance, so, um, you know, if it still has that shield, it does Last Mercy on the thing, it then can't kill Dolthariel, even if it has a blood move, because Dolthariel has the shield that it needs to get through. Um, but, generally speaking, um, having a higher HP means that fewer monsters will be able to kill it uh, when they are given a turn by Last Mercy. So Last Mercy kind of gets quite a bit better from this. Uh, Double Dark Bane is also a very high damage move. I don't remember exactly how much damage it does with this monster, uh, whether it kills, um, you know, the really tanky things, uh, but it's definitely good. And then otherwise there's some support stuff there. There's a Revival as well, which is it's a pretty strong Revival. Uh, revival is very good. So I think this monster, it fits pretty nicely into a lot of the criteria. In terms of how strong it is, whether it will ever catch on, I don't know, and that's why I've got it here in the B tier. But uh, if you like this monster or you want to really try it out, uh, go try it out and then, you know, see what you think and see if it's worth uh, doing the HP boost on it. We have Mega, Mega Sloth. So this um, fits a lot of the criteria. You know, it's, it's a protector, so being tanky is going to be make it be in the way more. Uh, in fact, what you really want with this monster is for it to be hit so it's woken up after using Exhausting Attack, so then it can use it again. Um, and, you know, <laughs> this is stupidly tanky for a legendary, so uh, giving it more HP is, is just going to be uh, surprisingly strong. Uh, exhausting Attack also does insane damage, so, you know, it does enough damage to, to kill um, any tanky HP boosted mythics, which I say that phrase so much in these videos. Um, yeah, so it fits, it fits the criteria nicely, it's just that there are really harsh counters and protectors, and it's a bit slow. So it doesn't fit into things, uh, the kind of power level that we play these days, but it is definitely very good and gains a lot of benefit. Um, Only Geist, now this is a cool choice, I think. So um, this can heal itself. It's awkward to kill because of the camouflage and whole ground and the fact that it can heal itself. There's a lot of combo potential here with uh, various monsters, which actually fits, uh, has fitted into the game very nicely ever since its release and even now and I think in the future because there's just lots of strong entrance monsters uh, that this can really abuse by putting them out repeatedly. Um, also the sleep stuff with Dream Hunt, you know, that doesn't matter about the defense of the monsters, it just does really high damage um, and then it can bloodthirst which is going to one shot. So this is just a strong monster that's always been strong, uh, it's always been on the sort of um, outskirts of PvP, sometimes showing up and uh, and being being a nightmare, um, but uh, not a super popular choice. But yeah, really good choice for HP boosting, I think, um, because it's going to be even more awkward to to kill. Then we have the Penguinator, a very like, it's a fan favorite of uh, the newer players. I still see some um, some older players, veterans with uh, very strong teams, just throwing Penguinator at the back of their team. I don't think that's worth doing unless you're in Link Storm, and that's why it's here in the B tier. Um, this also really needs the enemies, two of the enemies to have kills in order to use the Slayer Bane all and to one-shot them. At that point, it will one-shot the, the really tanky, uh, really high HP stuff. It, tanky doesn't matter here because it pierces, so it ignores the defense. Um, but yeah, uh, sorry if I you notice, I keep wiping myself. It's so hot right now. It's like 30 degrees. And uh, in the UK, I'm not used to that kind of temperature. We do not have air conditioning, so <laughs> I'm sweating here. Um, anyway, back to it. So this does really good damage. Uh, the piercing makes it 
still do really good damage. I just don't think it's a top tier monster unless using a Link Storm. So because it's restricted to that Link Storm, I, th I think it's probably um, should be down here in the B tier. It's not high speed either, so you know it can kind of like just bit, um, get killed off. Uh, it's not you know the highest defense either. Um, so yeah, just slips out of the of the S tier and A tier. Uh, Milgon, so this uh, it's not a popular monster, but it is pretty cool and fits well with the HP boost stuff because it's tanky, it can pierce stuff so it can easily kill. Yeah, that's why it's down here at the B tier. So that was every legendary that I wanted to talk about. I don't know how long I just took talking about them, but uh, there was about 30 legendaries. There's close to 200, I think, or over 200 legendaries in the game. All the other ones I put in the D tier. I do not think they're worth HP boosting. They just don't do enough damage. Um, or are too easy to deal with, or they're too outdated that you just wouldn't really consider it. So I hope that's narrowed it down pretty well for most people, though, you know, getting uh, slightly over 200 down to 30. Um, and likewise, you know, the, we've got the three tiers there of where I put them. Um, so yeah, those are the ones that I, I would say are worth considering. Now let's talk about three super epics that I think are worth considering. So the first one is a bit of Mist. Um, now this I mentioned earlier. Um, with the Poseidon, and ultimately, if you're going to do this, you're probably going for the Poseidon Mist combo, and you want to do the HP boost on them both, so that's a big investment. Um, but I'm I'm hesitantly saying that it's probably it could be worth it. Um, and Mist also, out of all the super epics, um, it's one of the ones that stands out quite a bit in terms of um, how it matches up to legendaries and mythics. So the Abyss Soldiers, they all get this um, Lone Fish boost when they're by themselves, which is a 50% boost to their stats, which basically makes them um, more like legendaries. Um, so their attack and defense are higher than legendaries are, but then their um, HP is lower, so it kind of balances out like that. And so they're, they're all kind of like legendaries in stats if they're alone. So it's about, you know, does their moveset, does it kind of match up to legendaries and things? Um, Mist is the only one that does, really. Um, so you could use this without B Poseidon and um, just plan to use it with stealth. And all you need to do there is either the enemy has a protector and you can true hit, and true it does insane damage now, so you can easily get a kill with that. Um, or you can do the stealth stuff and then, you know, it's a 100 second sneak attack, that's pretty damn good. So um, then it can grab a kill with that, and then afterwards Solo Blood Fury, which by itself um, it will have high enough attack to be able to be killing with that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah... You could use it in stealth setups, and it's going to work quite nicely. Stealth is often linked water, though, uh, or having some kind of water in it, which makes it a bit awkward with the solo moves here. But uh, there's potential there, um, and it will be pretty good there. And then with Poseidon, um, it still does just about enough damage with the sneak attack to get kills, and then similarly, solo Blood Fury. Um, I think you might need two kills with uh, Sneak Attack to be able to sell a Blood Fury, but hopefully you can line that up. And if they kill Poseidon first, well then you've got the stats buff, so then the Blood Fury will do enough damage. Um, like I said, True Hit will always do enough damage. So um, there's real potential here for it actually being a pretty good sweeper, uh, even in a meta of um, tanky mythics. And that basically sells me on it enough. Um, you know, compared to what other Super Epics offer, this is way better than a lot of them. Um, and the fact that you could use this both with Poseidon or just in stealth means I think it's probably flexible enough that I would say it's worth considering as opposed to something that's like, oh, in one specific setup, well, if that specific setup does, you know, becomes weaker in the long run, well, then you, you've wasted your, your ores. Um, so yeah, that's where, that's what makes me pick this monster. Uh, let's talk about the next one. So the only two other ones, these are ones that I talked about in the sort of annual review thing that I do. Um, last year, these two Super Epics came out, and I was just like, these are ridiculously strong. Like, they're way, way stronger than the other Super Epics. And yeah, actually, I think that they're, they're worth HP boosting, maybe. Um, so I don't know where I would tier rank these uh, compared to other things in the game. Uh, you know, the Legendaries and the Mythics. But <laughs> these are strong enough that you might actually think about doing it. So Maple Dragon, the moves on this are just insane. Like, it, it, it's so popular in PvP right now because it's it's quite clearly very, very strong. So if they nerf this um, after I make this video, do bear, bear that in mind, and probably it's not going to be worth HP boosting. But right now, it has got full defense with camouflage, and uh, the only thing holding it back there is its HP, which if you HP boost it, it's going to have the equivalent of legendary... Uh, like legendary HP, because it's about a thousand difference between Super Epics Legendaries, Legendaries to Mythics. So it's going to be like a full defense legendary, which is pretty tanky. Um, and then you've got this, um, you know, 
these moves that just don't really care about damage. Uh, sleep, stun, give turn, you know, all really good stuff for your team. Um, so the, it, the fact it doesn't do damage means that, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter because it doesn't need to. Um, and then it's got the benefit of putting a bronze shell on the enemy team, which is always good. So yeah, clearly this is just very, very strong and making it tankier is, is going to be uh, going to be even better. Um, yeah. The Volt Pink as well. So Volt Pink's the other choice that I would think about. Now this one isn't so popular, but I've used this and it's very, very strong. It's got good defense, which is one of the reasons. So if, if this had low defense, I would say it's not worth it at all. But the fact that it's got good defense means that it, when you HP boost it, it's going to um, actually become reasonably tanky and enough to the point that it's like, okay, it's, it's worth doing. The moves themselves, you know, the damage um, is not exceptional. Crescendo Strike takes a long time to charge, but it does get strong. And EMP um, is, is, is pretty good. Um, you know, it, it, you'll use it sometimes. Um, and then the other moves obviously don't care about damage. Uh, Double Repulse and Beastly Sleep are just, just very strong moves when they come up. Um, so the fact that it doesn't do amazing damage with Crescendo Strike doesn't matter so much because it will it will charge up um, in the long run. And you're using this for, for other means, like you're using it with one-on-one, -on -one, where it can then charge up its crescendo strike while things are going on, or it can, you know, it can do the support stuff with double repulse, be sleep, and also it sets up uh, rock stuff by summoning six rocks when it dies. So it does a lot of very powerful things, and um, making it tankier will be will be really good. One of the things I've I've definitely noticed about it while playing it is that um, the fact that it is quite easy to kill off is a bit annoying because once you charge crescendo strike it is a massive threat like you know compared to legendary it is like your strongest thing on the battlefield which crescendo strike is is doing good damage so the enemy team has to kill it off and at that point because it's like i want to say squishy it's not it's not that squishy but it's you know relatively squishy compared to like tanky mythics um it's relatively easy to deal with so having more hp is going to going to make it work well um, so those are the only three super epics that I would uh, consider, and like I said, Mist comes with a caveat because um, it would probably be used in specific teams um, a bit more, and like with the Poseidon combo and stuff. But the other two are just generally very, very good. Maple Dragon being more general purpose as well. You can put them in basically any team. Um, in terms of other ones, there are a few super epics which exist which have high defense. So I've got Shark Rex here. It's basically just in as a sort of stand-in that there's a few super epics that exist that have really high defense that can do some stuff that doesn't care so much about the fact that they do low damage because most of the super epics just don't do enough damage. Um, but Shark Rex here, this is, you know, it's got the double defense, so it's tanky. Um, Stun Immune just is good for PvP. And then it can do the raw backbite. So basically it does backbite stuff, um, which sets up combos, smooths out your team, and then has raw bloodthirst, which when it's charged, you know, when you've got two kills there, it's going to one-shot mythics anyway. So... It's the kind of thing which, like, yeah, it could work, you know, it's, it looks fine, but it's nowhere near as good as the Mythics and the Legendaries, which you could be HP boosting, but you'll just never get to this one. So that's that's the case, I think, with basically all the Super Epics, is that there's a few which kind of come up like that, which you would think, like, okay, this is a good one for it, but there's just so many other ones which are better um, in Legendaries and Mythics. And uh, similarly, we've got the Crystal Worms, they're another kind of notable thing. Um, they can kill things with their void moves very nicely, they're tanky, um, having more HP on them is going to be going to be brilliant. The only thing is though that they're, they're super epics and they're not as good and like if you want to HP boost the crystal worms, like how many is that that you have to HP boost? It's quite a few um, and their blood fury actually won't do enough damage, uh, you'll need two kills with that so whether they're blood fury or blood thirst they'll need two kills before they can one shot things which is just you know it's the kind of thing that doesn't fit in so well into uh, so what's going on. So I think most of the super epics you just don't really want to consider at all. Actually kind of similar to the um, the legendaries, but legendaries there's like maybe 30 of those, whereas super epics there's like three of those. <laughs> you mostly want to do mythics. So we're going to round this off by talking about my top picks. So this is what I would recommend from them, and it's not just like picking out some S tiers. But first off, we're going to talk about Ellen Fox. Uh, actually, I should say there are only three here which I'm going to recommend. And so these are, you know, if you were to do any from this video, I would say these three are probably going to be the most useful. Um, and so you do those three and then do mythics, and that's kind of where you sit, rather than kind of considering all the all these legendaries. Like I said, you want to mostly do mythics. Um, so Ellen Fox, uh, if you hadn't gathered when I talked about this, this is just exceptionally strong. It fits into um, 
fighting with mythics super well because it's it's like tankier than a lot of them to be honest um and does really high damage has got support control stuff uh sorry not support i mean control stuff uh so it does control does damage and it's tanky and that's just going to work really nicely so yeah, hp boosting that is going to work uh very well it's also only 13 cost uh, because it, with the secret skill it doesn't increase the cost um, I'm talking very specifically about the shadow version here, by the way, not the uh, not the holy version, which is quite a bit weaker. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's very low cost, um, so I think will be a very strong one. Another one is Jaseki. Now, this was in A tier, but it is a very good support monster, and uh, certainly something which which you'll be using for a long time. Um, like I said, with some monsters at the beginning, stun protection is a big deal. Having a good stun protection monster. Um, that's one of the reasons why Desikin gets used a lot, is it's it's a really good monster that is stunt protection. Um, that shield field just really helps out. And then having Purify to protect against some things, Cannibalized Token as well, you know, it does really good stuff. Um, so this is a monster which fits into a lot of teams. Um, so even though it doesn't gain the, the most benefit from HP boost compared to some other things, um, the fact that you'll be using a lot and it's good, means it is probably one that you could HP boost and you gain a lot of benefit because you'll just be using it using it everywhere. Um, another one which is somewhat similar to the Desikian choice here is Sturgeonidas. This is a very, very good uh, stun protection option. And um, as I was saying at the time when, when talking about it, Nullifying Strike is not the most exceptional damage, but it will be very good until that point when you're facing people with tanky HP boosted mythics and then you want to kind of slip more to doing union, union attack but it can hang there you know with the union attack so um, this is this is just a really good choice for it I think and the fact that you can use this um, very easily and for long term as stun protection uh, I think it's one of the best picks uh, for that. So that was enough talking. This video has been pretty long as I've gone through so many of the uh, of the monsters. Uh, like I said, there's about 35 of them. Um, not as many as the 90 that I did with the Mythics, but I talked a lot more on each of the monsters rather than rushing through. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed all that detail. Um, you can see on the screen where I put uh, the monsters that I talked about. Put a little star on the uh, Abyss Soldiers uh, because, like I said, there's some caveats with them. Um, the, all this stuff is going to be in the guide on um, the forum. So if you want to go... Uh, see the, an updated list um, or if you want to see all the monsters listed in detail actually I don't think I will have a detail I think I'll just skip that out completely to uh, to save myself the effort um, but yeah the updated list will be on the forum uh, on the tier list as well as a guide there if you want to go read that and check it out thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another video soon